uh, to address the needs of your first line workers. Uh, so as a format for this, we'll do a handful of slides. Then we will go into a desktop demo and then a mobile demo. And uh, I believe there's a window for questions that you're free to ask along the way. And at certain points, we'll be addressing those for you. And then hopefully you'll have what you need to go off back into your organizations and find some teams to start piloting, piloting, piloting these capabilities with right away. Uh, one of the things about all of these new features in Microsoft Teams is that Teams is now this the unified platform to for chat and collaboration for the entire organization. And that goes all the way from the boardroom to the first line workers. So we have one place where all of your workers can come together uh, and connect and work and be productive and really let teams be that hub for teamwork. We'll be showing you this in product, but I thought I'd set this up in, in the slides is the core capabilities that we are offering for first line workers, in addition to all of the other great features that we have in Microsoft Teams. So communications is definitely at the heart and soul of connecting everyone in the organization. And even within communications, that's a very complex pillar because there's lots of different forms of communications. And certainly in the almost two years that Teams has been available, you've seen us progressively bring together capabilities inside of Teams to make it a more singular unified interface for all your communication needs. So whether that's chatting, one-to-one, -on -one, group chatting, phone calls, video calls, meetings, all of this happening in one product is really beneficial. And now that that platform extends to the first-time worker, it's a really powerful value proposition. So communications is absolutely crucial. The next is access to content, documents, files, videos. And certainly in the first line space, this is a particular challenge today. And the because you see a world with hourly workers uh, where you tend to see a lot more turnover. And so having the ability to give them the right content at the right time for their needs so that they can be productive quickly, on board quickly, uh, you know, and get to work is really important. And the way Teams handles documents and the way that they flow with the conversation really keeps that in context for the user. And we see, you know, we get a lot of good feedback about the fact that not only is the content right there, but it's always easily accessible. And so that carries forward into the first line space as well. As much as we do a lot of things within Microsoft 365, there's always things that we don't do. You know, things that are uh, third-party ISVs you may be working with or line of business applications you've created for your industry vertical or for your company. And bringing those into the experience is just as important to being that hub for teamwork as it is lighting up all of the Microsoft-created capabilities. Well, the good news is with Microsoft Teams, we have the concept of the App Store where these apps can be published into. Uh, and we also have the concept of the private App Store so that you can take those apps and sort of wall them off for your organization and make them only available to your end users. Uh, so really, it's not just about what Microsoft does, but we want to bring together all of the things that any worker needs within your organization into one place and allow teams to be there, sort of the front door and how they get to those applications. And all of that happens through a single sign-on experience, which is which is really good. And then that way, you know, IT has full control you know, over the user and their access uh, and all that. And then finally, scheduling, as I said before, when we think of these first-time workers, we think of them primarily as a shift worker. You know, when you look at the two and a half billion first-line workers around the world, they all work on shifts. And then you have a lot of what we think of as classic information worker type roles and customer service or doctors and nurses or field service people. 
you know, they're, they're kind of IW profile, more sophisticated user, and they might even be using a laptop you know, or a tablet instead of the phone. Uh, but they work on shifts, and when you work on shifts, that is a really primary pivot to your life at work. And so now once you're on a shift, knowing who's working at the same time as you becomes really valuable. You know, who's on break? Who's at lunch? Who's working? Who am I working with tomorrow when I go to work? Uh, all of these things become very central to your life uh, as a shift worker. So scheduling is really, really important. And we just uh, released this in GA in Teams a few weeks ago. So we're really excited to add this capability into Teams. Uh, I'm actually going to go right into the demo and show you this. Why don't I do that? Um, we're going to start on desktop, and we're going to start in what might be an unusual place, uh, which is in the admin console. Uh, so one of the things that, and I'll sort of start at the top as, as if you open the admin center. One of the, as much as we've added these new capabilities for first-time workers, the most powerful change, in my opinion, that we've made to Microsoft Teams to really modularize the user experience so that you have control over what the user can use and do and see inside of Teams. So we have one version of Teams in the App Store, but using these app policies, which are down here, you can define the experience that that end user will see. If you looked at it sort of in a traditional context, all of us who are on the call who have Teams it's probably the same version. Uh, and that's sort of our global org-wide default view. Uh, even in this, I've actually gone inside there and changed it to, for my purposes, you know, to show demos. So I have some things in there that you may not see in your teams because I'm showing you some of the latest and greatest capabilities, you know, things like tasks or announcements. But I put them in my experience, and then I can put them in the order I want to work with them and then when I come over into my Microsoft Teams, that navigation and that order is what is represented here. So that's sort of, you know, powerful for me as a Teams user. But what is even more powerful is I can now take and define particular groups of people and give them a different experience. So I'll be walking you through my traditional retail store example. And let's say I have a role that I call inventory specialists. And the, in, the inventory specialists, I give them these capabilities, and I also give them this inventory bot. Now, I don't give that inventory bot to all workers. I only give it to the workers who need to use it. So like in this case, the inventory specialist. Or if I look at my store associates, you know, maybe I give them a really limited view. Uh, and it's just very, very focused on the essential things that they need. But what's powerful about this is I talked about the app store and the private app stores. I have the ability to add apps into this uh, experience. So let's just take an example, a common example. You know, maybe you're using a third-party workforce management product like Kronos. And because Kronos has a, in this case, it is a bot into the app store, I can actually come and add that into the experience. So I can make that part of their primary experience. And then you see this is you know, our shifts as we built for teams. Well, I could even remove that and say, you know, you're, they're just going to use the Chronos app for their schedule. So having this level of fidelity and control lets you define a set of users, what applications they have access to, and then what is what really becomes their pinned applications that are the navigation that they'll experience when they open the app. So this has been, you know, as I've shown this to customers, it's a really powerful story. And it's not just about the first line, it's just that when we made all of these adjustments to the experience for the first line worker, it really forced us to think about Teams all up. And now that we've done that, you are in control of Teams for all of your users. So that's where I wanted to start, kind of paint that, that picture for you. So then we'll go into Microsoft Teams on the desktop. I'll start here with the schedule because that is 
you know, a big piece of new capability, very central, as I mentioned, to the uh, shift workers experience. And so knowing the schedule, manipulating the schedule, planning the schedule, really, really important for the managers as well. So I'll show you just a few things about this. Uh, and the nice thing about this is even though we have this experience, with Teams, we have many ways you can do the schedule. Uh, for example, we also are making this particular experience accessible through a Graph API, which is in preview. So if you use some other system, it could be a homegrown system, third-party system, uh, you have a way of bringing that data into this experience. So you can use the tool sets you use in the back end you know, maybe in specific markets you have specific tools. You can do that here and still give your end users uh, the powerful, easy to use, you know, unified first line experience in Teams. So uh, just a few things to talk about here. You'll see how the team is set up into different roles. We call these groups like cashiers, sales associates. Um, they Companies tend to work in standard shifts, so in this case, the green represents my opening shift, the pink is a closing shift, and the blue is a swing shift, but you can define that any way you want. Um, we also have this concept of open shifts, and these end up being uncovered shifts, so if we take like cashiers on the 29th, you know, I have one slot I need to fill from 8 to 5, and so this can be posted up. And then people who don't have a shift like Alex or Lynn or Johanna, they can see that shift and pick that up. Uh, some people call this like the Uberization of work because it allows the actual worker to define their schedule. And I've even, there's only one customer I know of, they go to the ultimate extreme where they only publish open shifts each week and then everyone takes the shifts that work with their schedule. Uh, so that is a, a key feature that is available there. And then we have other ways of directly communicating right within the team. So like you'll see up here we have our day notes that give certain data that the management thinks is important to the employee. So in this case, it's like sales goals or traffic goals or certain things that need to get done. We also have the ability to go into a specific schedule and have what we call activities. And these are, some people call them sub-shifts. It's how we how you can take a longer shift and break it into components. And so you'll see uh, customers who use that to put a break in there, for example, um, or a training block to do some specific training. So that's another sort of construct that gives you some flexibility in defining the schedule. Uh, and then if you pull out, say, to the month view, you'll see how the schedule is published and if i go now we're almost at the end of january and i look at the february i can see that i've started building out my schedule up until the middle of february uh, so i have some time you know you can see like down here these stars on there that means it's an unpublished schedule so sometimes i'll jump up and so now i see this schedule for the week of February 3rd is all in a draft mode and then I can work and manipulate that and then once I'm done share that out with the team and that'll send the team a notification that that week's schedule is now up and running and you, they can go take a look at it. So um, this is certainly very core capability and we're going to be moving in the direction of actually adding uh, a new sort of version of presence within Teams called off shift and on shift, which will be you know, driven off of their schedule. And the nice thing is, is that with that indicator, we'll be able to then go into the app policies and then define a different experience if they're off shift, if that's what you need to do. This is a question I get asked quite a bit. Is there, is there a way to limit capabilities you know, when they're not working? And so in Microsoft Teams, you will be able to do that uh, if you're actually using the scheduling capability. Um, now, of course, 
communications is at the heart of everything we do. And the some of the other things that we've added include a uh, employee to employee recognition called praise. And I can come in and like in this example, some praise was sent directly one on one between Ben and Miriam. This is a brand new feature. I could also come to my team's general channel and put the praise here. So if I wanted the entire team to see that someone was being recognized, I could do that here. And it's super easy to do. Let me come down and um, and you can sort of see some of the different forms of praise. You know, maybe someone else has been a team player, like let's pick Adele. And um, I can just leave a little note yesterday, helping the team. And then send that off. In this case, because I'm doing it in a channel, uh, everyone gets to see that. So, and there you see that there. So these are some of, the, this is another feature we just launched uh, about 10 days ago. And, you know, we're always trying to push uh, employee engagement as much as possible. These things are very popular in the first line space, both being recognized, but also being able to recognize others. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about channels. So channels are a subset of a team. It's a way to divide a team out into specific areas. And like here, you'll see I've created 14 channels. Uh, and so you, you could take a role view. You could take a departmental view. You could take a content view. You know, it's really up to you how you structure it. But I tend to like to sort of show onboarding as an example, because as I mentioned, there's a lot of turnover here. So being able to onboard people quickly is really important. And so, you know, I can have standard content that I share within the onboarding, like employee handbook or checklists of what you need to do now that you've started or what's our company all about. You know, really standard content, and I can put that in the flow of a conversation, or I can put it up here in tabs. And as I talked about the document handling in Teams, we automatically filter out the actual documents within a conversation flow and put it into files so that they're always easily accessible. But if I have a piece of content that's really, really important, let's take an example like the employee handbook. Um, you know, this is a piece of content I want everyone to be able to find anytime they want, and they always know where to go, and they don't have to go looking for it. So this is a you know example how I can actually pin that specific document right into a tab. Uh, another thing to show is you know video content. So in this case, I won't go through and, and play a lot of this, but I will show it to you. You know, now we have. Stream directly integrated with uh, in Microsoft Teams here through a tab. Uh, and so if I have a piece of content, like in this case, this is a, a, a Contoso, which is our, our demo company name, uh, CEO monthly Q&A. So some people are going to watch that live, but a lot of people are going to watch that later. Well, Stream is really powerful because I can come right into uh, the video itself. And let's say my colleague said, oh, yeah, I watched that earlier today, and they were talking about our new bonus. Well, I can go search directly into that uh, into that video because it's all been indexed through stream, and it'll actually show me, in this case, the two times when bonus was referred to. And it gives me a little snippet of that text. So here it says award a cash bonus. Then it'll jump me right to that part in the video. So that's a really cool feature. But what is really powerful about having this inside of Teams is I can then start the conversation. And so I can come over and just start talking about it and say, well, um, I really, sorry, I really liked the new bonus concept. And so now, inside of this video, I've started this conversation. And so now we can all, you know, other people on my team, 
you know, can come in and we can have this conversation about this piece of content. And that's, that's really, really powerful. We could do the same thing on, on the employee handbook. You know, it's a piece of content, yes, but what's powerful is now it can become the center of a conversation. So what's nice is we're sort of integrating all these things together, and I'll show some of this to you on mobile as well, just how easy it is for the end user to get to these capabilities. Let's see. I think now I'm going to switch over. It's a good little pause of their questions. Bill, I'm going to switch over to my phone. Yeah, I've been able to answer all the questions so far, Rich, but if there's any new questions, please enter them into the chat window, <clears throat> and either Rich okay. or I will answer them. Okay, let me mirror here. Should pop up. And come on. And just confirm that that is coming through. I can see it, Rich. Okay, great. So we'll go to mobile. And I started the demo part, part inside of the uh, app policy, showing you how we can control the team's experience. And so I often get asked, well, what is then the minimum experience that you can give a user? And I thought we would start there and then kind of build in additional capabilities, much like we would see you doing that, you know, in your environment. We always push people, start getting people on the product and chatting with each other first. And so within Teams and through my app policies, I can define this experience, and I believe this is our absolutely simplest experience. And this is a chat experience really only. And so if you look here, I have three pin apps. I have chat, camera, and activity. And it's no surprise that this actually lines up very closely to what a lot of users would be used to if they use consumer communications applications, you know, like a WhatsApp, for example. And so we can bring an experience and simplify it all the way down to this for the end user. And that's really powerful because a lot of these first line workers are big power users of consumer applications. So if they came into this app right now, I just handed it to them, they would know exactly what they need to do because they're used to that experience. So we kind of want to build off of what they already know about certain applications. The difference here is we're obviously built on Office 365. We're secure. We're compliant. We can we have auditability of those streams. You can put it in legal hold, do e-discovery. There's lots of back-end power because it's on an enterprise secure enterprise grade communications platform. Um, but at the end user level, it's quite simple. And so it's not just about that we can lock it down and kind of simplify the experience of teams for these workers. It's also what is inside of the actual chat surface itself and all the richness that we've added into chat. Like here's a group chat. Uh, we saw some praise there that I, like I showed um, on the desktop. Uh, sharing location, uh, a new feature, very popular, um, can be great in certain work scenarios. We find a lot of, um, uh, a lot of the communication at this, within this persona to be driven around images. And so image annotation is a really important capability as well. Then within the actual, within each actual post, I can react to that post. So not just the thumbs up liking a post, but really give a full range of reactions. Um, and then because this is a group post, I'll show this. Uh, you know, maybe we take this last one. It says. You know, I have my full range of reactions, but it also says read by, in this case, 0 of 12, because I may have just sent that. And so we have this concept of read receipts, but not just read receipts in a one-on-one -on -one chat, but also in a group chat. So as people go and read this, I, when I come in and look, I can see who's read it and who hasn't read it. And all of those, then, are also events in the stream of this conversation. So if you ever need to prove did someone read it or not read it, you have that, you know, in your back end and you can go 
uh, go get that. So that's a very powerful thing as well. Um, another thing that's kind of important when we think about this in the context of, um, you know, kind of being compliant, and that is around uh, using photos. And so if I come and I'm taking a picture, like, of my conference call device, uh, I can take that picture. I can annotate that picture. I can say, you know, let's say this is made by Jabra. So I can come in and, oh, Jabra. And annotate that and say, okay, I'm done with that. And I send it off. Well, you have the ability to prevent that from being put on my photo stream on the phone. So that photo that I just took and added into that conversation is not stored on the phone. There's a big compliance hole with uh, WhatsApp. I'm always asked about companies, especially in Europe and Asia, around how can you help us you know, move our workers to an enterprise-grade tool and off of WhatsApp. You know, this is one of the big reasons why uh, not storing that on the phone. So we've simplified the experience. We've deepened the, ex the experience within the chat itself, and we think that's really important to offer the same type of richness that people are used to in consumer tools. So then I'm going to go to a new capability, which is how we've unified channels and chat into the same surface. So all the chats below there is what I just showed you. But now we're doing more collaboration. We're doing more, uh, you know, we're, we're exposing these users to more standard content. And I'll go back into that onboarding. Uh, but you can see how we've pinned three of these channels to the top of their experience. Again, always looking for ways to simplify. So when I come into this experience, you can see that I have that same content, you know, going back to the employee handbook or onboarding checklists, et cetera. So all of that comes to you in the same way. I, I didn't talk about it, but I do have an announcement bot we call uh, company, co company Communicator, where I can write these, uh, can compose these certain broadcast messages and push them down to the users. Uh, and so do you, I know you've seen those in the, on the desktop as well. I thought I'd show that to you. And then here's that conversation about the video. So when we talk about start this tab conversation, we can now you know, have the conversation, but also have the content right there. So if I'm someone else on the team coming in and commenting on that, the video that they're talking about is right there. And so I can go pop right into that and start watching it. If I'm new to him and I'm like, what is he talking about? So uh, you'll see that right there. Now let me go over to files and tabs. So these are the same tabs that I showed you on the desktop. So here's our files filtered down for you for convenient access. Here's my employee handbook pinned right to the top so it's easy to find. You know, here's my uh, Contoso Q&A. And then you can add things like SharePoint sites. Maybe you have an HR site, uh, a benefits website that you need employees to have access to. You can make those all easily accessible you know, as a tab, and that I think the experience is really elegant within uh, within the experience because it flows very quickly from the conversation, you know, to get right into that content. Um, we talked about the the uh, line of business applications and publishing into the App Store, and you can see here how I have three apps: Chat, Camera, and Activity. And maybe this is the soft way I want to get people started. Well, you'll see when I swipe out, I have a whole bunch of other apps in here as well. And so now I would want to drive this to the first line users with uh, app policies. But let's say now I've decided they're using shifts and maybe, maybe calling is now available to them. So now I would pin those other two apps into their experience, and now they'd have this all integrated. So the shift and schedule that I was showing you on the web is now right here in Teams. And I can go into you know, my schedule. I can see 
There was my training that's coming up. I have the uh, sales goals for the day. I can go to the upper right and see who else is working today, at what time, in what role, sort of conveniently uh, you know, organized for me. Or maybe I realize that on the 30th, I cannot work that day because I'm the opening manager. I have a doctor's appointment in the morning. So I can come in here and say and initiate a swap, a shift. And so I come and I go to the 30th and here. And then I pick, let's pick Adele, who's my closing manager. And I let her know, hey, I've got a doctor's appointment. And so, you know, can we swap shifts? And so right here within the application, without knowing Adele's email, without knowing her phone number, I'm able to go in, see when she's working, if it works out for me, this one does, you know, and I can then go send that off to her. And then I wait to hear back from her if that's going to work or not. And so, and if she says yes, then it goes to the managers for final approval. That approval is made and then the schedules are updated. So this particular scenario is a heavy source of pain in most first line workers' lives. When they get sick, when they can't get into work tomorrow, they need someone to cover their shift. And this is why they use a lot of consumer tools to connect with each other so that when they need the problem solved, they have a way of reaching the rest of the team. Well, here within Teams, we've built this natively within the experience so that it's very easy to do you know, for the end user. And all the information they need to help you know, problem solve it is all made available to them. Uh, so the other thing I'll show is open shifts we mentioned before, uh, and I can go in here and I see the open shifts that are available for me, but I also see whether there's a conflict with my current schedule. So, you know, I know to not grab any of those, but, you know, maybe this one on Friday the 1st, you know, I would be fine with. So I can go, you know, try and pick that up. Now, because I'm the manager, I can self-approve this, so... I do that on purpose for demo purposes, but you'll see there it says new total 54 hours. So whenever we do open shifts, we automatically add that, that amount of hours to their total that they already have that week. So that if you want to manage around uh, overtime and, and what you're having to pay people, if, if it kicks them into overtime, you would know that. So I may say, you know what, Ben, um, I'm not going to let you go into overtime on this schedule. So I'm not going to approve that. Uh, so but we give you that data to kind of help you make that decision. So the, uh, let's see, onboarding chat. Uh, one other thing that we will show too is this is all very optimized for a working team. You know, my team and my work, in this case, it's my store. So all of us are really super connected. We're having these conversations. We've got these channels that relate to our job and our, our work. But oftentimes I'm asked, you know, how do I connect the workers in this store to the workers in other stores or maybe across the world? And the way we do that is uh, through Yammer. And Yammer is has built a tab within Teams that allows you to interact with Yammer directly within Teams without having to leave Teams. And then I can subscribe to a Yammer groups in directly into channels. So in this case, I've got a Yammer group called Collaboration Central. And I build, I connect this particular channel, which we call cross-company collaboration, right into uh, you know, right into Teams. And then this acts as a feed to that conversation. So then when I come over here, I can see what the latest posts are in that Yammer group, but then I can go right into the conversation if I want to respond to that. So the nice thing here is that you can have all of your all of your various stores, you know, subscribed into that channel, and it's a way of helping connect them outside of their team, you know, and build that broader community and culture 
but still allow them to do all that experience right within Teams itself. So these are some of the interesting ways we're trying to unlock the power of all of Office 365, but surface it through a very singular experience for these first-time workers in Teams. So I thought I would show you that as well. Um, last thing I'll add here, uh, and this is a bit of a preview for you, but uh, task management is a very crucial upcoming feature. Uh, and you know, we talk about the first line spaces being, when am I working, where am I working, and what do I need to do? And those are sort of your three essential questions that the workers are asking themselves. And so we've shown the schedule about when I'm working, and a lot of times in the schedule that says where you're working, what department, what role, uh, what location, etc. But then you get into, well, what, what do I need to do uh, when I'm at work? And so task management is a new feature that we're building out so that we can bring that natively within the experience. Um, and so, and I, it's very new, so um, stay tuned on that because that's going to allow us to bring the same type of richness to the what do I need to do into the work experience for the worker. Uh, the last thing I wanted to show is a bot example. And uh, we talked about, I showed you on app policies how maybe the uh, company is using Kronos for their schedule, and we have this bot experience. Now, this bot experience could be in addition to the native app, uh, Shifts app experience in Teams, or it may be just standalone, and it may be what we pinned in our app policy for this user. But the nice thing about uh, the Kronos bot is it's very menu-driven. So if I come in here and I look at, say, how many vacation hours do I have, I have a, you know, a defined number of options of questions I can ask, and it's all very menu-driven. So here I went and said how many vacation hours. It says I have 100 hours of personal leave, 100 hours of vacation, 100 sick hours. Uh, so I can see that and sort of what that status is. And that's live data that was queried right off of the system. Um, and maybe I, like, I need to take a tick day. And it says for what date, and I can probably say tomorrow. And then I'll come back, well, how many hours? Well, I'm going to miss all eight hours tomorrow. So you can see how you are taking sick Yes. So you can see how uh, the bot really drives the conversation and allows you to go you know, step by step through the process so that you don't make any mistakes. And then it sets us all up and it says, okay, you're all set, you're taking that vacation. Or I could say schedule and it'll show me my schedule. And so here's my schedule this week. Well, let's look at what the schedule is next period. So this is super simple approach for what in the back end is very complex data, but it's another way to help someone you know, get the essential things that they need related to their schedule. Uh, and so in the bot framework really opens up a lot of interesting options to customize the experience, you know, in ways that your, your users may need and want. And I believe I'll stop there and go to any other questions you may have. And I'll keep this on in case I need to show you things to answer your questions. Thanks, Rich. Um, <clears throat> no questions yet. So I'm just uh, calling out to everyone to uh, enter your questions if you have any. And uh, if we have a little time, we could uh, run the uh, Marks and Spencer video to see how they're using Teams in their yeah. retail stores. I'll just give it a couple more minutes. I've gotten about four questions during the course of the uh, the, uh, the presentation. 
um, but none are worth uh, raising up at this point, uh, answering again. Okay. Okay, I think I've given people enough time to think about it. Let's show the video, and then we can um, come back and answer any questions afterwards. Perfect. It's Thanks, two-minute video. And I am not seeing it. It's the first time I've tried using show video here. Let's try this one more time. Looks like it's thinking about it. While you're doing that, I'll, I'll just click through some of the things I'll, I was showing on mobile. Like I like to show um, how the Yammer tab fits into that tab experience. Uh, so you can have that conversation if you're using it on desktop, you know, nice and integrated into Teams. So you can come in here and, you know, like posts and reply to things right inside of Teams. I think that's really powerful. The other thing I talked about Kronos is the end user and, and sort of answering questions about your schedule. Well, if the manager needs to go build the schedule, we have a secure tab with Kronos so you can launch their console, again, right inside of Teams. I'll show tasks as well, and you know tasks can be both kind of one-to-one -one type tasks that we do with each, you know, have with each other. But there's also publishing out of tasks. If say you're pushing tasks across many different stores, so like this was something we were showing last week at the NRF show, where I may have you know a new collection and I'm pushing things down. And I can see the status of, you know, I pushed this down to all these different stores. So being able to publish down to a bunch of locations a package of tasks and then track centrally, you know, how the completion is happening with those tasks. So I see both how those buckets of tasks have been assigned. So in like you take in the United States, I can drill down and see that uh, the U.S. West stores have started assigning them in Seattle. Oh, and then my store, I've already signed that and completed that task. So this is like a roll-up of very complex things happening across many different stores, and I can see that status right here. Uh, I can go into the team and see all the tasks that have been assigned uh, across the team, Put them in order. So this is coming soon, but it's really the first time I've shown this externally to folks. Rich, so hold on, bring... just pause for a sec. Yep. Okay, sorry about that, folks. Uh, we're getting used to this platform, so Rich and I cannot hear or see the video. And uh, I'll just put out a question if you want us to run it one more time. We have another five minutes, ten minutes. Um, so, Rich, the way it works is it plays for them, and we can't hear it or see it. Okay. <laughs> so, I think we were you, we were talking over the Marks and Spencer video. Uh, so let me uh, let me just oh, ask folks. Uh, my bad. <laughs> no, no problem. It's new for me too. Uh, folks, should we run that again? You could just uh, type it in, and I'd be happy to run it again. Or you could ask any questions in the uh, question box. Well, let's do this. Uh, since I'm not getting any questions or any feedback on whether I should run it again, uh, Rich, why don't you close uh, with the call to action, and then if there's any time left, I will uh, run the video one more time. Sounds good. So thank you, everyone, for taking the time with us today to learn about the new capabilities within Microsoft Teams focused on our first-line workers. Hopefully, this gave you a good sense of what's possible and got you excited to find the pocket within your organization where you can get 
going with this and really uh, pilot it right away. You know, I do pilots all the time with customers all over the world, and it is a very fulfilling experience for me because the, when you see the impact that this type of technology has on these first-line workers' lives, it's just a very powerful experience. You know, traditionally, they have not had a lot of technology investment, uh, and you know, even things like getting the schedule or seeing the latest announcements from the company, many times that requires them to get in their car and, and drive to the location where they work and go in the break room to know what's going on. And now this can be right at their fingertips, you know, 24-7. So I really encourage you to find some places where you can start piloting. I think you'll see the experience gets a very positive reaction. We are here to support you. So you'll see the worker at Microsoft.com. Definitely send an email there if you have any issues, questions, need any support. And we will help you in any way we can. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rich. And um, if you want Microsoft support um, conducting a pilot, we've got a few spots left where we are working closely with a set of customers and these customers will have an outsized influence on the direction of the product as we refine it. So if you want to um, uh, get in involved in um, Microsoft engineering, uh, supporting your pilot of teams for your first line workers, please email me at worker at Microsoft.com. And uh, with that, I will play the video one more time. Thank you all for uh, participating today.
Okay, I am. Uh, I'm. I'm on.